Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at how to actually develop your own film in a Patterson tank. Uh, if you've been following along, you know that we've done a video on how to actually mix the chemicals once you get them. The link to the video is going to be up here. Um, right now though, we're going to actually take those chemicals, put them in the tank, and uh, actually develop our film today. So hopefully we can get some images. I'll show you what that looks like. We'll break it down bit by bit so you're not overwhelmed. It really is an easy process. The Patterson tank makes it super easy. Um, so why don't we take a look at this and see how it works. So the Patterson tank, it allows us to develop film uh, in light, basically, right? The only thing you have to do in darkness is load the film onto the actual reel, and I'll show you what that looks like, guys. But um, yeah, this guy basically has a lid here that comes off. And this lid allows you to pour chemicals in here and you pop it on and that way the liquid doesn't get out. So when you're agitating, none of the liquid spills out, right? So that is the lid here. And then it also breaks down right here, this top part. And this is all light tight, by the way. I mean, that, that's the main benefit of this, right? So your film is in here, take the lid off. You pour the chemical into this spout. It goes down here. Inside, we have a spindle and we have a reel that your film is going to be on. So this is a spindle, right? And it sits down in the tank. So there's a little groove down here and you pop the spindle in here and it allows it to stay in place basically. So the trickiest part with this thing is the film reel itself, right? This thing is a plastic uh, film reel and you can set it for either 120 film or 35. So the way that you load film onto this reel is you have to find a dark closet or some place that's extremely, extremely dark. And when I say dark, I mean no light spilling in under the door. Um, I went into a closet, my dark room underneath the stairs and I put a sheet up on the door. So no ambient light whatsoever could get into me. So you're in complete darkness and you have to load the film onto this in darkness, right? So there's two little grooves here. And once you have the grooves going over the ball bearings, you just do this and it advances the film onto the reel. Now, I've loaded a lot of film onto a lot of reels. Um, you know, mostly the, uh, the metal ones and the, uh, the metal tanks. That's kind of what I'm used to. But I'd heard good things about this, got it on the cheap, thought I'd give it a try. This reel is the devil, the absolute, absolute devil. It took me, I think, half an hour to get this film onto this. Um, I don't know if it just because I hadn't used it before, I wasn't used to advancing like that, but it was an absolute nightmare. Um, and then when I, I talked about it online to some of my uh, photographer friends, they had the same experience. So we're going to be using the Patterson tank today, but keep in mind that it is kind of a pain to get the reel on here. However, the tank itself works beautifully and that's kind of the, uh, the best part about this, but the reel, the reel is a nightmare. So once you have the film loaded onto the reel in complete darkness, you take that and you put it onto the spindle. You take your, your lid here, put it onto this, make sure it's locked in place. And the way you check it's locked into place, is just, see, it wasn't locked into place. You take it and you lock it into place. And the way you check it's locked into place, give it a little pull, and then you put your cap back on here. So once all that's done, your film is now light tight and you can begin the developing process and we'll see what that looks like now. So I should say the hardest part about developing your own film at home is getting the developer and the Blix at the right temperature. For the chemicals that we're using, they need to be 109 degrees Fahrenheit. And that can be difficult, right? It's hard to do that. Normally, I think in college, um, we would run things, the bottles under a tap and try to get the tap water as hot as possible. And we would just be sitting there waiting for the temperature to get it right. I've kind of found a little bit of a hack to make that a little easier for us. And we're gonna be using a foot spa to get the developer and the Blix at the right temperature. And so I'll show you what, what that looks like, guys. It's, it's a little wonky, but it works like a charm, I guarantee you. All right, guys, so we have our developer that's been sitting in our foot spa. It's at 109 degrees um, Fahrenheit, so it's nice and warm. We're gonna dump this into our tank and start developing. It's gonna be a three and a half minute developing time. 
and we are going to agitate for the first um, for the first 10 seconds. So go ahead and pour this in. You know, I'm wearing gloves to be safe, and um, I'm also wearing some glasses. I don't want anything splattering up on me, but we're going to dump the whole bottle in there, guys. So we have it, we have it in there. I'm going to make sure the lid is nice and tight, tight as can be. Don't want any spills coming out, and we're going to agitate for the first 10 seconds. And then we're just going to agitate every um, every 30 seconds. And then all we want to do is put the developer back into our bottle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some uh, hot water, 190 degree water in here just to get the rest of the developer out and clean the lead. And then we will do our uh, Blix and finish up here, guys. All right, guys, so we're back. All I did was I ran some 109 degree water through here just to get the extra um, developer out there, you know, any excess there. We're going to open this up and we're going to add our Blix, which was also um, at the 109 mark. And this is going to make the images permanent, stop it developing. I'm just going to go ahead and add that in there. And again, I'm being extra safe here. I've got my gloves, I've got my glasses. I don't want any splashing. You know, this is. I mean, you're dealing with chemicals, right? So um, it's not dangerous as long as you take the proper precautions, which is what we're doing, guys. So I just wanna make sure the lid's on tight. Seems to be on good. I don't wanna spill any of this stuff anywhere out here. And 10 second things, just like the first one, guys. All right, guys, this is our last rotation here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the Blix back into the bottle, and then we're gonna go downstairs and we're just gonna do a, uh, a rinse with some regular warm water right from the faucet. I'm gonna do it for three minutes. I'm just gonna turn the faucet on and let the water go in here for about three minutes. Uh, make sure the water is warm though, not cold. And then once we do that, we can come up here and I can see if we got images. Uh, right now though, guys, just so you know, the images are stabilized. They can be shown out in day, but I wanna do the uh, wash real quick. All right, so let's go downstairs and give this guy a uh, wash. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, what all I did was I ran this under a uh, sink for three minutes. So just warm water constantly uh, flowing in this thing for three minutes. Um, I haven't opened it. I'm a little excited. I'm a little nervous uh, to see if we got images. Um, so let's let's see what we got. This is I mean, honestly, guys, this, this is the best part about film photography is when you've done all this work, you know, you've put the time and effort in and Pulling this off and seeing the images, I mean, this is what it's all about. So having your hand be able to, uh, you know, really craft these things is, is what it's all about. So we'll open it up and see what we got. So we have this right here. And we've got images, guys. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, man. It's still wet. 
Um, obviously, we do have images. It is on the reel. By the way, this is what it looks like on the reel. Um, this is what took so long was for me to get this. I'm not gonna unroll it here. Um, I'm gonna hang it up downstairs in my shower with some clips, but I just wanted to show you guys. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but um, we've got images. We have images, so. Oh man, this is. <laughs> uh, um, I'm gonna get these uh, dried. I'm gonna scan them in. We're actually gonna see some images um, together. And yeah, that's what it looks like, so. All right, we did it. And there you have it, guys. I mean, that, that's how you develop your own film in the comfort of your own home. It, it's really easy, as you guys saw. Um, I think the hardest part was actually getting the film onto the reel in the darkness. And I'm hoping, um, you know, with a little bit of practice with the plastic reels, it'll get, get easier. Or I might just have to go out and buy me a metal, uh, a metal tank and reel. Um, but hopefully you guys have found this video informative. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments. And as always, please make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps us out. And hopefully you guys have seen that the dark room really isn't dead.